Hello everyone and welcome to Tuesday tutorial time and uh, we're looking forward to going to tier three after lockdown finishes <laughs> for the foreseeable future but um, hey it is what it is as they say. Right, um, this week's tutorial song is uh, Rocking Around the Christmas Tree uh, written by Johnny Marks and a big hit for Brenda Lee in 1958. Um, it's a very short song there's only eight lines of, uh, of, di of lyric. Um, so we've devised a cunning plan. Ooh. Yeah, haven't we? Mm. Yeah. Um, we've decided that you can either do it straight through twice in a choice of two keys, or much more fun is to go through it once in one key and then through it again in a different key. Clever, no? Mm. <coughs> A plan so cunning you could pin a tail on it and call it a weasel, as Blackadder once said. Right. <clears throat> okay, now the introduction um, is the four chords that you're very familiar with. It's just a variant on the ice cream changes, the doo-wop changes, the C, A minor, F, G7, uh, because... Um, the D minor 7th shown in the introduction to the key of C, which is where we're starting, um, is only one note different from F. So it's basically C A minor F G7 uh, with just a slight tweak. So <coughs> the two little dots either side, if you've got the tutorial sheet, you'll know what I mean. And if you haven't, it is available. Um, the two little dots either side of the um, the, the chords at the in the introduction are repeat marks but just a bit of musical notation so that means that you play C A minor D7 G7 twice and then get into the song right now the um, rocking around the Christmas tree it's um, it is a, a rock so that um, now you can do that one of two ways we've already uh, in, the, in our lessons on the ship, we've talked about doing that rock, rocking on and off the A note on the G string. Um, well, you can do that at the beginning of the verse of this song in C. You can play it. So just um, rocking your finger on and off the second fret of the G string. I've got my low G uh, tenor again, by the way. Pam's got her high G soprano. Uh, so again, it just gives a different flavour to the way you want to play it. Um, we can also do that rocking uh, figure, like echoing the melody. The da 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 da. We can do that uh, higher up uh, an octave above by playing C as a C five which is 0033 three. and C6 we just play as an A minor 7 0, 0, 0, 0. Like that so it's a nice little rocking motion and then we get to the G7 at the Christmas party hop now you can pick up the melody again here should you choose to do so on your plain a first position G7. So we get Christmas, which is a G9, so that's 0, 3, 2, 0. So you're picking up the A note there, Christmas. You play a G7 and just lift your ring finger. Then we've got the F note already there, and we've got the D note already there. So if you can stretch your little finger over to the third fret of the G string, then there's the B note. So we're getting the melody there for the second half of the first line at the Christmas party hop. Um, and then the second line, we've got a D minor seven, which is what the accompaniment would be doing. Now, I've said this on several occasions, where a song sheet calls for a seventh or a minor seventh chord, you can always play the root chord 
and that will work. So here it's calling for a D minor seventh, but you can perfectly happily play a D minor and it will work just as well because somebody's going to be doing the D minor seventh and putting that C note in. <coughs> but if you want to pick up the melody, you play that D minor seventh as a D minor because you've got that A note there. So we've got D minor to G7, gives you the melody, the A da -da -bum, and the B. Every <coughs> now at the end of that line, you go from a G7 to a G, which is actually a chord change that not many people like, because it, it involves a complete change of position of, of your fingers, all three fingers. Um, <coughs> and that's one that may trip you up, so beware of it, a G7 to a G. You can just drop your little finger on the third fret of the E string. So in, instead of doing that, you can play the G7 and then just double fret the, uh, the, G, the E string. So, that gets over that particular little pitfall. Second verse, same as the first, uh, nothing different there, no. <coughs> except when we get to the end of the second verse, we're transiting into the bridge, <coughs> which goes to an F chord. So we know how to transit from a C to an F chord, don't we? We go via C seventh. So every You can play that C7, the first position, 0, 0, 1, which is fine. I prefer to hide the seventh note, the B flat note, elsewhere in the chord. So I would almost certainly, especially with the low G, I would almost certainly play the C7 there as 3, 0, 0, 3, like so. So you're hiding that B flat underneath. So we get to some And then we get to a, an F, F chord, that's fine, you will get a sentimental. Now, again, the accompaniment properly should be an E minor 7th, but as I've just said in relation to the D minor 7th above, if you are called on to play an E minor 7th, you can always play an E minor chord, <coughs> but not vice versa. So in this instance, you can play E minor seventh, which is zero two zero two, or you can play a plain E minor chord, which is zero four three two, and it sounds better because you've got the melody there. On under your three fingers, you have the melody of feeling when you hear. There it is. B, G, E, G, B. The three notes in the E minor chord. <clears throat> and then the last line of the bridge is the really interesting bit about the song. <clears throat> because you've got a little run down uh, going from an A to an A flat to a G to an F sharp. And there are two ways of doing it. If you have a low G, you can put it down there on the G string. And so you're starting with uh, a, a minor, but I suggest you keep the C note in, keep your ring finger on the uh, third fret of the A string. Again, to pick up the melody. So you're playing an A minor with an added C then you slide your index finger down onto the first fret of the G string to give you the uh, augmented note. And then... <clears throat> now, the A minor seventh that's called for there, now it's time to let go the C. But not if you want to keep on with the melody. So 
you can do that. And the A minor sixth, well, there are all kinds of ways of playing an A minor sixth. In the context of this song and in that, that little passage, that run down, easiest way to do it is play it as an open D seventh. So two zero, two zero, because you want to get that F sharp note in. So we want to get, yeah, so. And then if you want again to pick up the melody on that D chord on deck, you play it as a two, 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 five. So you've got that deck. So we can uh, we can put all that together. If we put that middle eight together, uh, we come up with something like this: two, three, four. to be um, if you if you've got your low G but you want to point up that uh, that run down that, then you need to do it on the E and A strings but you can do it it's a little bit awkward so you play the A minor plane and then add your little finger to the fourth fret of the E string, but mute the A string with your little finger. Then slide your little finger down to the third fret of the E string. So we get it up there. But because the, the A flat note, that G sharp or whatever it is, only half a tone different from the open A string. That's why you need to mute it. The other way is to play the A seventh like uh, the A minor like that with your little finger, uh, your ring finger, and then uh, leave your ring finger on the third fret of the A string. Either way, um, you can experiment with that and find out what works for you. Um, right, so that's the middle eight, um, and the verse, the fourth verse or third verse, just goes back to the verse format. Now, if you're going through it twice in the same key, uh, when you get to the end of the last verse, you just plough on as you did at the end of the um, first verse. So we get to everyone dance. If you're going to play through it twice in C then you just plough on but if you do do that when you get to the end of it the second time in C we need to, to, to play that ending in the new old-fashioned way that phrase needs to go at half speed and it's a slightly different melody uh, because it's doing this in the new old And to achieve that in chords, we play in the new on a G, and then we go to old, it's got that, that rogue sharpened D in it. So we do that by playing in the new, sorry, sharpened G, not sharpened E, come to that later, sharpened G. So in order to get that note in, we need to play a B diminished. And then the flat, the sharpened G is on the A on the G string. So we get in the new old fashion D7 G7 C. So the second time round, that last line becomes two, three, four. B diminished is one two one two. 
Scotland Yard. You're, t you're too young to remember. I call one two one two, but that was the old phone number for Scotland Yard. Met. Uh, right now, everything else, everything that we've covered uh, in doing it in C, applies in G. But of course, the chord shapes are slightly different. So if we whiz through it in G, um, most of the same things apply, but the introduction then becomes those ice cream changes in G rather than C. So G minor, A minor, uh, E minor, sorry, A minor seventh, and then D seventh. <coughs> now the rocking that we did on the C chord uh, in version in C, you can do quite simply uh, on the, uh, the G chord, just lift your ring finger off to get the G sixth which is another name for the E minor 7th chord. So. And you're also picking up the melody there. So, at the Christmas party hop. Uh, whichever D7 suits you at this point, they're either the Hawaiian Open D7 2020 or the closed D7 Two 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 three, whichever whichever you prefer. Um, let me get to the second line. We're doing an A minor seventh to a D seventh, um, and uh, if you want to pick up the melody, then you can play your A minor seventh quite happily like that. And the open D seventh works well there. Um, if you prefer, and if you like the sound of this one and you'd like to practice it, now is a good opportunity to do so. An, an alternative to A minor 7th, rather than just that, which is, you know, a bit naff. Try 0, 4, 5, 3. Now that's A minor 7th and a different inversion and a different position. You've got the seventh note there on the G. You've got the E note in the A chord. You've got the A note uh, there on the C note. So we've got our A minor, which is A, G, uh, sorry, yeah, A, E, C, up there. And you've got the G note, the seventh, down there. So that's another voicing for A minor 7th, which I rather like. But it's up to you. Uh, what else? Um, if you play the D 7th uh, in the second position, 2, 2, 2, 3, then to go from a D 7 to a D is a lot easier. You just drop your little finger in on the 5th fret of the A string. If you're playing the open D 7th down there, then you can either convert it to a D by um, moving fingers over or flatten middle finger across the C and G strings if, if your finger flattening works like that. <coughs> okay, that's the verse for doing it in the key of G. Um, second verse again is exactly the same as the first, but we get to the end and we're going and we'll do some count. You're going from a G to a G seventh. Now, doing it in C, we did that the other way round, didn't we? We went from G seven to G. Well, here you're going from G to G seven. So that's again that's the change of complete change of finger positions. Um, there's not really a workaround for that, so you'll just have to work at it. Um, now we get to the bridge, and we get again to you will, you, you will get a sentimental feeling. Now you can play a plain B minor seventh, then, da, 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 da. or if you prefer, the B minor works equally well, which is uh, the B minor seventh is two 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 two. Uh, but the B minor is 4 2 2 2. So, either way. And then we come to that little run down, uh, which is uh, what we did on the. in the key of C. 
Now, in the key of G, it starts on the E, uh, on the e note. So, to achieve that, we start on an E minor. So we've got the E note on the C string. Then we move that to a G augmented, which is 0, 3, 3, 2. Then to a plain G, and then the E minor sixth. From G to E minor sixth, just slide your index finger down towards the nut, down to the first fret. So there we are, we've got that. And then we actually stays on there. So what we get there is yeah. So put that together and it works like two, three, four. The halls with clouds of holly. It's nice, it's a nice effect. A lot of club songbooks leave out that little run through the augmented note. And I think it's a shame to, to leave that out because it just adds a little bit of interest to your accompaniment. But it's up to you. Uh, <coughs> and then we finish uh, with the, the last verse, which is as good a place as any. Um, and again, if you're playing this through twice in G, you just plough on through the ending. So we get everyone. Okay, um, but if you've reached the end and you want to do that um, half speed last phrase, uh, then again you need a, a few sort of additional chords in there. And what we get is in the new, which is on a D, set, a D chord, old, now you need to get that sharpened D there. So we play that as a C diminished. And new, A7 fashioned way. So the last line, last time round, works out as one, two, three, four, just finished it on the um, well the, the, the third position G which is seven 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 ten and that's it I think I've yeah. covered everything there that's Pam it. usually tells me if I've missed something I know out, so. I try <coughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> so I think that's about it um, and uh, and so we'll leave that uh, in your capable hands anybody wants the, the song sheet let us know and we'll forward it to you. Otherwise, we'll be uh, putting up a play-along version of this uh, later in the week. Don't forget our comic song uh, on Friday. We're getting into Christmas mode, as it is now December. Um, Might even put the tree up. Oh, good Lord. Oh, yeah, put the Not tree. yet. Not yet. Another couple of weeks. Um, Christmas Eve will be good. <laughs> Our daughter-in-law has had the tree up for about three weeks now, goodness sake. But uh, enough of that, we're not getting into Christmas quite yet. But uh, we'll have another tutorial next week, Comic Song on Friday, and uh, in the run-up to Christmas, we'll do some festive stuff. Right, that's it from us, yep. isn't it? So we're going to go and leave you in peace, and uh, so you know what to do. Stay safe, look after yourselves, and be kind to each other. And that's all from us for today, isn't it? So goodbye from Pam, goodbye from me, and we hope to see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.